And that welcome to this video in which I'm going to answer the question of this video, why is this the best technical exercise you can possibly do? The reason is because anything you want to play, whether it's chord or melody or improvisation, you're always going to be using, obviously, a finger combination. And the more that you practice these finger combinations, which this technical exercise achieves, the more comfortable you'll be playing any repertoire, left or right hand. So it goes like this. You're going to put your thumb on any note that you want. I'll start on uh, E, for example, middle E. And all you need to do is do a chromatic alternation with every finger combination. It's not about speed. If anything, it's about precision and endurance. I might have mentioned this before in other videos, but this, this video is specifically about this because I'm going to show you some variations as well in terms of um, rhythm or dynamics, timing, all these things. So E on the right hand, thumb. You're going to take each finger individually and alternate. So first one is going to be the index finger and you want to go to your natural stretch without pushing it because you'll never play further ever whether you're playing a chord or a melody you'll naturally never play further or have to play further because all music was written by a human hand from in my case the E to the C it might be the B for you it might be the B flat the hand size does not matter everyone's hand is different and you just want to get used to doing this the thumb never moves and you're getting used to every single interval that the fingers will ever have to play the, well, in this case the thumb and the index finger and that's it that is literally it but you want to do it for like you know three minutes per combination so you've done the thumb and the index the next one will be thumb and middle finger it's natural stretch for me it, it can go beyond it it can go up to the, even the e but for me a comfortable stretch would be up to the d so that's all well and good try and make it steady and all the same volume it's not about speed it's about precision and endurance now don't just do it in one octave, do it in different octaves, because if I do that down here, I can't at all really comfortably reach the, the um, E to the D at all, because my, my wrist is, stretched, is twisted. I, I can only comfortably get to maybe a, even a B here. That's the most comfortable. So try it in different places, whereas up here, going off the screen, I can very comfortably, even here, I can comfortably reach the octave. And it just feels completely fine, whereas here, it didn't, because the wrist is twisted a bit. So try it in different octaves. Um, so that's so you'll do that with the thumb and the index, you'll do it with the thumb in the middle, you'll do it with the thumb and the ring finger, but you don't need to start next to it, like on the F, because that will never happen. You might want to start a third away or a minor third on the G perhaps, because that's possible in real music. So that's that's a comfortable octave. Let's come back to I mean you can come down anywhere you want, maybe the G flat there. So you're just going to go up and down like that, that's the idea. And then the little finger, you might start a fourth up, because you're never going to play an E and an F with the thumb and the little finger, it's just silly. Well, you can if you want to, but it's not realistic. So maybe you just see where you come naturally to, like a, a G or a G flat, perhaps. So you've got every finger combination from the thumb in one or two different places. The more you do this, honestly, your, your playing is going to improve so much, no matter what repertoire you're playing. And I'll give you some demonstrations in the left hand now. So that would have been on the thumb, let's just say on the C in the left hand. But this time it's going to be the index finger. So let's move to another note. Let's put it on a black note, a B flat. And uh, it's going to be uh, with the every finger to its left. So that would be the middle finger next. So for me that goes to an E. Maybe even an F is more comfortable actually. Yeah, the F is more comfortable. So you'll do that for a minute or two or three. Aching is good, pain is bad, don't hurt yourself, but it's quite nice to get it until you get a warm feeling in your lower, in your forearm. Middle finger, let's do that from the um, G with the ring finger. That goes to an E flat for me. Some of them are only short, but you'll never play further than that on the real piano. Maybe a D, but I kind of have to force it a bit. And then of course the ring finger, so let's do that on an F with the little finger. This is going to be a very small one. Down to the D, maybe the D flat. So you get the idea like that. With both hands, all finger combinations. Try it in different octaves, but be realistic. Your right hand is never going to play all the way down here. So it's kind of a bit pointless. And same thing with the left. You're never going to play your left hand all the way up here. It probably isn't going to happen. Probably. I mean, you can do it for an exercise if you want to. But just kind of be realistic. The right hand and the left hand can both be uh, in their comfortable octave. So the right hand will be middle C. The left hand will be the octave below plus the octave below. And the right hand will be middle C octave plus maybe two above, which is quite realistic, which is quite nice. Now, you can have some variations of this exercise. Uh, so one of them you might do with dynamics. So I'll just do it again. I'll just do it simply with the index finger. 
and so you'll start quietly of course and you'll get louder. I don't know if it's going to come out but I'm getting, I'm trying to, I'm playing really soft and I'm getting louder but I'm not changing speed. I'm just playing it harder but I'm not speeding up. Some, sometimes people if they play, if they play harder they suddenly speed up which is not right. Maybe use a metronome. Soft, soft, a bit louder softer so you can use it as a dynamic exercise which is really really good another one might be a time signature so you might do it in a kind of let's just say three four so you're just going to feel a three four rhythm so it's going to kind of go one two one and two and three. one two three one two three so you're going to get a weird fingering combination but it's a feeling so it's going to go one two three one two three I, I can't do it and talk two three one two three one two three and you'll emphasize beat one each time, for example. So, one, two, three, one, two, three. You might do it with five. Two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one. So, it's in a different place each time. A bit more brain power required there, but it's quite useful. Uh, you can even do it with a bit of swing, a bit of rhythm, any any rhythm you want. So let's just do another one with the left hand, maybe um, index and middle finger. And it might, you might, I'm, I'm feeling a kind of kind of swing so I might kind of go what did I say index middle middle and index so I might kind of go I'm just, I'm just kind of feeling a swing so I'm, I'm just making it a bit more interesting that way uh, now in terms of there's two more things I'd like to say before closing the first one is that you can do all of that with both hands together but it's easier to do it in what I call the it's called the butterfly effect so you'll find a symmetrical point C and E, for example, and you'll do that exercise simultaneously. So you'll be working both sides at the same time. So you'll do thumb with the index finger, and you'll go out, and the, the natural stretches should be the same on both sides, which is great. And I also recommend doing these with your eyes closed, of course. Uh, when you get to the other fingers, of course, you can move to other positions, like the A flat could be good for the ring finger and little finger. possible doing it here uh, and the final thing is uh, that you and of course you can do that octaves apart as well uh, or C and e, so you could do it like this like quite far apart which is good when you are um, with your eyes closed because you can't it's harder to jump over two octaves or even three octaves uh, and the other thing is that in terms of this chromatic stuff with finger combinations uh, try to run up chromatically but in, not just alternating but going up in pairs this is one of my favorite ones I, di I did for years and years and years you'll just take every finger combination and just go up chromatically one or two octaves it seems simple but you're giving yourself the ability and the tools and the precision and the mastery to be able to play all the repertoire you want to play so let's just take for example uh, right hand uh, middle finger and ring finger you can do this over major scales but chromatically you get more notes of course because there's 12 instead of seven you're going up in pairs like this and then going down with all the finger combinations you can do them hands together you can do different like for example left hand uh, ring finger middle finger right hand might be index and middle no index and ring what was that? yes brain power involved but it's really great to be able to do those kind of things find your natural limit it's not about speed it's about precision and endurance you want to do this for five minutes until it just becomes so com so comfortable jump up to another octave and do it up there uh, that's the idea the more you do that the better you're going to get and that's it as always likes comments subscriptions are always welcome have a look at my video management website water penis and patch patreon all my playlists and i'll see you in the next video all the best and bye for now